Hello and welcome to the third episode of my podcast. I am Chris Stevens and I'm going to be talking today about mental health and addiction. And they're two different things. However, you know, addiction does obviously lead uh, to poor mental health, but vice versa, uh, poor mental health uh, can lead uh, to addiction. So, you know, when I think back to my story, I remember being, you know, diagnosed with depression. So I was diagnosed with depression about 13 or 14 years of age. And I think that this, you know, as an adult now reflecting back, I think that I wasn't, you know, so much depressed. However, you know, I grew up in a house with nine children. Um, it was very difficult to have uh, friends over, uh, you know, specifically um, a girl. You know, I can remember feeling, you know, so fucking humiliated uh, one day when my girlfriend, um, who was so desperate to come over and see me, uh, was getting dropped off there uh, by her dad. And I can remember, you know, she's on the way, you know, dad's driving her, you know, the first time he's going to meet me. And, you know, I just had a huge uh, fight with my mother. It was just a madhouse. And I was just so embarrassed and ashamed, you know, to have this lovely private school girl turn up with her dad. And I was just so embarrassed and ashamed of her coming to my place. And, and I said, you know, you can't come, you know, obviously, you know, that was kind of almost the end of the relationship, I recall. And, you know, it was, it was also, you know, at the time where I, you know, didn't really want to, you know, swim anymore. I kind of hated getting up, you know, at 3.30 in the morning, caught to four in the morning. And, you know, so I was kind of, you know, was I depressed? I don't know. You know, was I, was I unhappy, you know, with my home situation? Yes. Was I unhappy that I was doing something that I, you know, I didn't really want to do anymore? Yes. And, um, you know, anyway, I was put on um, Zoloft, an antidepressant, you know, medication, um, you know, which I never really took. I mean, I, I never took my antidepressant medication because, you know, I just hated the idea of having to take a pill um, in order to be happy. Um, you know, however, I did end up taking the whole box, you know, one night with a mate of mine. And, um, you know, that was, that was crazy. We didn't really know what these things were going to do to us. Um, you know, and we just kind of halved the box. We halved, we halved what was there. And I'll never forget kind of waking up because we went to sleep, you know, we, we went to bed, but, you know, we woke up very early in the morning and, you know, maybe, you know, I think probably at five o'clock. So we wouldn't have, we wouldn't have probably had the tablets until probably after midnight. So it probably took about three to four hours, uh, before they'd all kicked in. And, you know, I just never forget going from the room that I was in and going to the spare room where my mate was, you know, sleeping. And I just remember opening the door and just looking at his face, just like, holy fuck. Like, and we both just grabbed our bikes and just, you know, went for a you know bike ride. We're off our bloody heads. But, you know, my point is, is that, you know, it's important to, to kind of think back and ask yourself, you know, like, you know, did mental health start for you first? And then you kind of found drugs and all of a sudden you kind of, you know, all your mental health kind of problems were kind of numbed. Um, and the reason why this, I guess, is important is because, you know, when you're, when you decide to give up addiction, um, you know, you, when you stop the drugs, you know, what often happens if there's, you know, pre-mental health issues is that you stop using the drugs and, you know, you're, you're kind of left to face and deal with all of these mental health issues that you've probably been, you know, masking, um, you know, for a long time. And, you know, this is something that I can say that, yeah, you know, like I, I the fact that my mental health wasn't good, you know, like at the time, I mean, that was why the drugs were just such a, a fucking match. You know, it was, it was, it was just the, 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 the perfect timing between, you know, my life and my mental health not being good. And then 
trying drugs. And, you know, this is important for you to kind of have a, spend a bit of time thinking about because, you know, if you don't get your mental health right, you know, it's not going to be long before you fall back into using. You know, and I think that, you know, stopping drugs is absolutely one thing, but keeping your mental health in check is absolutely essential. So, you know, so that's that's an important part of addiction. You know, understanding that, you know, when you stop using the drugs, there might be other issues that you've, you know, been masking through the drugs for the years that will come up that you need to attend to. So really you need to attend to your addiction you know, and your mental health at the same time. But it's interesting. I, I um, a very close friend of mine um, just relapsed. And when I say relapsed, he got on the ice last Friday night and his mental health before that, you know, was pretty good. I mean, it was, it was interesting. I just had a chat with him before and I said to him, I said, speaking to you now, is like speaking to a different person. You know, this person that I was speaking to now just a few moments ago was was flat, was tired, was, you know, just down. You know, and that's, that's the kind of problem with drugs. I mean, you know, drugs will fuck your mental health if it's not already fucked before. You know, and I said, gee, it's just such a difference it was such a difference chatting to you, you know, a week ago and, you know, the confidence, the, the attitude, it was just, it was just like two different people. And, you know, really that's what life is about. We are either going to be the good version of ourself or we are going to be the bad version of ourself. And I am telling you that, being the best version of yourself is is totally your fucking responsibility. Only you can make that decision about, am I going to be the best version of me? And if I am going to be the best version of me, like what does that look like? Because I can tell you the best version of me is not someone who doesn't do what they say they're going to do. I mean, that that there alone is one of the major contributors to people suffering poor mental health. And if you've got poor mental health, your likelihood of using drugs is kind of like at 100 fucking percent. Because if you're not feeling good because you didn't do what you said you were going to do, well, I might as well fucking take drugs and take me fucking mind off it. So the best version of you, the best, the worst version of you doesn't do what they say they're going to do, you know? And again, it, I can't stress it enough. It's like one of the major causes of mental health, you know? And if you don't take it seriously, and I'll remind you, like your life is, it's fucking serious. Addiction's life and death. Mental health. It's life and death. The amount of men that commit suicide and the amount of men who do it slowly, you know, through addiction. Now, addiction leads to death. It's a slow death. You know, so we all have, we all have a responsibility to be the best version of ourselves. And the best version of myself he doesn't use drugs. He doesn't drink. He, he doesn't lie to himself and say that he's going to do something and then not fucking do it because I've been the worst version of myself. And I know what contributes to me being that person. And I want you to take it seriously. You know, I really do. I really want you to take your mental health seriously. I want you to take addiction seriously. Because I see far too often the negative, destructive hell 
that people put themselves through, that I put myself through for so many fucking years. You know, and, and it's what's kind of nice is that, you know, it's 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 almost so far away for me. I mean, it's actually, I mean, I have to really stop and think about how bad things were. Because things have just been so good for so long now, it's like I'm just used to things being good. And that is just one of the the best things that, you know, can happen to your life. It's like so many people are just so used to things being bad. They expect it to be bad. It's always been bad. I always fuck up. I always never do what I say I'm going to fucking do. You know, when you live in a constant state of fucking misery and fucking resentment, and that's that's my whole fucking point. I mean, I just kind of go, fucking mental health is so often self-inflicted. Now, if it's not, okay, that's, that's cool. And that's kind of completely fucking normal too. You know, but... But in this podcast, I really want to make it clear to people that your mental health is your responsibility. You know, if you've got pre, you know, conditions like depression is, you know, runs in the family, you know, like there's all these kind of mental illnesses, you know, schizophrenia, you know, all of these kind of things, they are hereditary, they are passed down. And again, it is your responsibility, you know, to handle that. You know, so when you give up the drugs, you've got to handle your mental health as well. But in this podcast, I really, and I wanted to make that separation in this podcast as well. But I really am talking to the people who suffer mental health through their own stupid decisions, their poor choices. You know, so I'll go back to the story with my mate. And, you know, it was interesting. I mean, I, and, and, and I was able to. I was, I was able to foresee this happening and I'll, I'll tell you why. So he's looking for a house to rent and, you know, he said the person that he was, you know, going to move in with. And I'm like, mate, doesn't he smoke fucking ice? Oh, yeah, but you know what I mean? I'm like, okay, all right. So, you know, the, the, the war, okay, you want to move in with somebody who's smoking? Okay, right. So... You're sleeping with a girl. She's also on ice. Okay, right. So there's a lot of, you're surrounded by a lot of ice. And for someone who is an ex-ice addict, you know, and nearly 12 months clean, um, you know, and you kind of go, well, you know, you're rooting a girl that's on ice. You're about to move in with a guy on ice. And you're hanging out on a Friday night with an ice addict. You know, like what did you think was going to happen? And this is, you know, this is, this is so important. Like, you know, your mental health is so largely impacted by the people that you're hanging around. Like, fuck it, you know, and this is why I'm getting so frustrated. I was like, mate, you're going to move in with an ice addict. You're sleeping with an ice addict and you're out on a fucking Friday night with an ice addict. What the fuck did you think was going to fucking happen? You know, and you can kind of, you know, and you have to take responsibility for that. You have to take responsibility that, you know, and he knew, he knew that, you know, if you don't want to smoke ice, don't hang around with people that smoke ice. It's a fucking no-brainer. But, you know, people fall back into old patterns, fall back into old friendships, fall back into things, and then you kind of go, and now your mental health is really fucking suffering. And now you really fucking regret that four hours of high that you fucking had. You know, so it's just, it's so important that, you know, mental health, it's such a big fucking thing. It's just, you know, there's so much government funding. There's so much awareness about it. But, you know, that's all external stuff. I mean, I want you, motherfucker, I want you to take responsibility for your fucking mental health. It's your responsibility. And it's the same as our physical health. You know, physical health and mental health are the fucking same thing. You know, a physically healthy person is only physically healthy because they do what's good for them. And if you're mentally healthy, guess what? 
well, wouldn't it make sense that you did what was good for you? I mean, you'd have to be an idiot, right? To do what was bad for you. And do it regularly. You know what I mean? Like, you're an idiot if you are fucking obese. Because you have continually made poor choices and neglected to take responsibility for the reality of the reflection in the fucking mirror. You don't get fat overnight. It takes months and years to become huge. It's your responsibility. And then what happens when people get overweight? Addiction's the same, so I'm using the same thing. But then what happens? You refuse to take responsibility for your mental health. You refuse to take responsibility for your physical health. And then what do you become? You become a fucking burden is what you become. Because the health system is now burdened with your drug addict ass, with your big fat ass. Because, you know, you clog up the fucking hospital beds. Because instead of being physically and mentally healthy, you know, you've decided to live a lifestyle and make choices that make you mentally and physically unhealthy. And everyone else has to take responsibility for it. You know, the, the, the family, the children have to take, you know, bear the consequences of the drug addict dad, the neglectful dad. You know, I mean, I know people that can't even push their own child on a swing because they're too fat. Mental health and physical health are the same thing. And it's your responsibility to look after it. And what frustrates me and why I'm so passionate about this is because I see I see people living lives they don't want to live. I see people who are so unhappy with being who they are because they just simply cannot take responsibility. They can't do what's good for them. And if you don't want to be as depressed and if you don't want to be as fucked on drugs and if you want your life to improve, I can, I can tell you how to do it. Start doing what's good for you. What's the worst that could happen? I mean, just think about it. Like, what would happen if you took responsibility for yourself and your life and you decided like I did that I didn't want to be a fucking idiot anymore? I didn't want to be a fucking idiot. You know, I didn't want to be dumb. I didn't want to be depressed. I didn't not want to reach my potential. I didn't want to be someone that I'm not proud of. And today, I'm someone I'm proud of. And my, my, my mental health is, is fantastic. My physical health is fantastic. I had a full medical done yesterday. And it just feels so good. And the reason why I'm telling you this is because I want you to feel that as well. I want you to feel this good. Because I know the positive effect that I am able to have and spread because I got myself right. You know, there's an old saying, if you want to change the world, start by changing yourself first. You know, and that was something that, that I really reflected on. And I, and I thought, you know what? Yeah, I, I, did, I do want to change the world. I, I, I would love it if, if, if I could have a positive impact on the world. I would love it if the world was a better place because I was here. And you know what I know? You also want the same thing. 
You're a human being just like I am. And you want that too. And why not? Like, why, why not see how far you can go? Why not find out how much of an influence you can make? You know, and why, why not you? Why not you? You know, but you're going to have to start taking responsibility. You know, you're going to have to, you know, stop taking drugs. Because it, it leads you to nowhere good. You know, you're, you're, you're avoiding dealing with the, with, the, with the internal stuff that's going on. You know, you're, you're refusing to take responsibility for what's causing you to use. You need to start facing your problems, taking responsibility for your problems. You know, and if your mental health is a problem, well, it's your fucking responsibility. If your physical health's a problem, well, it's your fucking responsibility. You know, have you ever thought about it? Like, what if everyone was just like you, just didn't give a fuck? And was just so fucking obese that they were fucking, I mean, just imagine if everyone was like you. A drug addict. A fucking fat, unhealthy person. Like, just imagine if everyone was like you. And then just imagine if everyone was like the best version of you. You know, there would have been no issue during COVID because of lack of hospital beds. Fucking most of the hospital beds are taken up because of people are fucking, their poor choices. Their, their poor physical health. Their poor mental health. Obesity and heart disease is the biggest fucking killer of all. And it's all self-inflicted. It's all self-inflicted. Who's getting force fed at your fucking dinner table? Who's forcing you to take the drugs? Who's, for, who's holding a gun to your head saying, fucking use the drug? Nobody. So you're in control. You're in control of your mental health. You're in control of your physical health. And, and that shouldn't scare you. That should fucking excite you. You mean, I actually am in control of something? Yeah. You know what? If you wanted to, you could fucking stop using drugs, man. You, you, if you wanted to, you could stop because no one's fucking forcing you. If you wanted to lose weight and if you wanted to be able to run around with your fucking kids and push them on a swing, you could do that. You could do that. You know, and it's just, it's just incredible that, you know, we could be anything, like we could all be anything. And yet, how many of us are just alcoholics, drug addicts, obese, unhappy, resentful, regretful, miserable, angry? Too many of us. So it's important. If you want to be the best version of you, which fucking why wouldn't you be? It's time to take responsibility. It's time to take responsibility for your addiction. It's time to take responsibility for your mental health. It's time to take responsibility for your physical health. Because you're here until you die. What else is there to do? What else is there to do but improve? Wouldn't that make sense? Okay, if I'm, if I'm here for another 30, 40, 50 years, why not see how good I can be? Why not be the best version of me? Because the best version of you isn't the one who's coming down all the time isn't the one who's constantly running away from their problems with drugs. It's not the one who's constantly stuffing themselves with fucking junk food and you know, can't even bend over to put on their fucking shoelace. That's not the best version of you. And you know it. And I want you to start taking responsibility for your future because you are in control of it. Stop making excuses that, oh, this is the reality. So please, I can tell you, 
You know, you are responsible for, for your future. I, I, could, I could still be a drug addict today. And you know what? You know my story. You know, you know all the bullshit I've been through. You know, I, I could so easily justify being a resentful addict. Mate, I could, I could, I could really justify being the biggest fucking cunt on earth. But I refuse. That's not the best version of me. It's not the best version of me. God, what, a, what an awful person that sounds like. And I've been that person. I've, I've, like that photo, I, I, I posted a photo about, of me five years ago and me now, and I just kind of go, wow, it was just a beautiful image of, you know, the, 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 the bad version of you, the emaciated, off his head, you know, and then the, the, then the big proud, you know, happy father that I just kind of go, you know, it's so important for you to be the best version of you. You know, it really is. And I, I'm going to leave it there, you know, so I really hope that, you know, you get this. You get that, you know, you have a choice. You have a decision, you know, and you can either take responsibility for your life, for your mental health, for your physical health, you know, or you, or you cannot. You can blame, be resentful, be regretful, but, you know, which one would you rather be? You know, and it should be fucking obvious. We'll see you next week.